We have with us today the freshest and the sweetest news from the Korean bio industry. My name is Juri Huang and I will be delivering some of Korea's hottest biotech issues today just for you. So don't forget to subscribe, like and set your line for bio TV. For the bio news this time, we have prepared a new space so that we can have a fresh start in the spring. So today we'll bring you the news on Korean biotech companies rush to get listed on NASDAQ to enter the U.S. pharmaceutical market. We'll then take a look at ST Farm's establishment of a new biotech company in the U.S., which will focus mainly on the development of new drugs based on RNA and CAR-NKT platform. Finally, we'll be talking about Quino's acquisition of the European CE mark for its MEMO Memo Watch, a wearable electrocardiogram measurement device. Korean pharmaceutical and bio companies are ramping up their efforts to get listed on the Nasdaq market as part of their dream of becoming a global player. With Coupang's recent listing, which saw a rapid increase in its corporate value, the K-Bio companies in the industry as well as investors are also now paying close attention to their move. Experts say that these companies' efforts to get listed on Nasdaq is intended to raise their corporate value and become global companies by entering the American market. In particular, many believe that their rush to the Nasdaq market is clear evidence that they are already equipped with global competitiveness. A researcher from Samsung Securities said that the reason why they want to be listed on Nasdaq is to take advantage of the biggest pharmaceutical market in the world. This will in turn help them to raise their corporate value. It is expected that being listed will also help them to establish a global network with multinational pharmaceuticals and in turn give them a leg up toward becoming global firms. Lee seung vice president of Korea Bio, said that the pharmaceutical and bio industry needs to target the U.S. market in order to enter the global market. He also emphasized that technological competitiveness and localization efforts are also key factors for getting listed on the Nasdaq market and making their way into the global market. ST Farm announced that it had established a Lavatio Therapeutics in San Diego in the U.S., a biotechnology company that develops new drugs based on RNA and CAR-NKT platforms. ST Farm intends to develop novel cell therapeutics and expand its business as a CDMO company based on its previous experience in manufacturing oligonucleotide and mRNA gene therapy. It is expected that San Diego will provide opportunities for joint research and technology exports. The reason behind this is that it is home to the research institutes of global pharmaceutical companies such as Pfizer, Merck, and Novartis, as well as other biotech companies including Ionis and El Nylum. Levatio Therapeutics plans to establish an RNA and CAR-NKT platform and focus on the development of cancer immunotherapies and cures for autoimmune diseases. According to ST Farm, Levatio will establish four new drug pipelines to help with developing treatments for laryngeal cancer, cervical cancer, lung cancer, and autoimmune diseases by 2022 and for conducting clinical trials starting from 2023. SD Farm said that Lavatio is expected to gain leadership in the field of new drug development using its RNA and CAR-NKT platform technology and will also make efforts to create synergy by expanding its business as a gene and cell therapy CDMO. Huino, a company that develops AI-based healthcare products, announced that it has obtained European CE marking for its Memo Watch. European CE marking is given when medical devices comply with all the requirements and guidelines 
as specified by the Council of the European Union. The CE mark is required for all products distributed and sold in the European market and is known as one of the most difficult certificates to obtain along with the US FDA approval. In particular, the CE mark is often used as a certificate for medical devices by mostly Asian countries. This is why Huina's recent acquisition of the CE mark is expected to be helpful with the company's entrance into the Asian market. In other areas, Huyen is also conducting joint research on the treatment of cardiac arrhythmias and is establishing its strategy to enter the Asian market together with Johnson & Johnson medical device companies. That's it for today's news. Don't forget to subscribe to, like, and set your alarm for Bio News. Make sure to have Korea Bio as a friend on Facebook and LinkedIn as well, and I will come back to you in two weeks with more new interesting issues related to the Korean bio industry. Bye.